All right, now let's set up the VPN connection. Okay, now the first thing, let's go to the users. And from here, the first thing we need to add an organization. And the organization, let's name it Dev Tech Ops. Okay, or name it whatever you want. Click on add and as simple as that. Okay, now we will start creating user inside this organization. So actually the Brighton is very powerful actually. And you can see that we can put and create many users for each organization. So I, so I have three organization and for the sales, they have their own VPN connections for the IT team. They have their own connections, the developers, the DevOps, whatever. Okay. Now add user. Now let's name it user one. Okay. And here the organization will be the DevSecOps, the email. It's okay. It's optional. And here, if you want to use a bin or whatever, okay. For now, I will use just user one, as simple as that. All right, you can see that it is still offline now. And from here, you can see we have more configuration. We can disable or di disconnect the user, and we can download the configuration file. And this is something what we will talk about. All right, okay. But before that, actually, let's go to the servers from here and let's add a, add a server because we didn't add server yet. Okay, so for now, we added an organization. We added a user, but it's still not online, but we need to add a server. So add server from here. Name the server you want. Dev sec ops dash server, anything. The port is like this, and it is UDB. The DNS server is the, the default one. And here, this is the virtual network we have, and this is one. Well, actually, I will leave it as is. Now, it has a lot of options like the WireGuard, the Google Authenticator, a lot of things actually. If you can see that we have the advanced option, and yeah, as well, it has a lot of things. So I will leave it as is actually, and I will click on add. So you can see that as simple as that. So you can see that we, we have the server, but actually the server must be attached to an organization. Now, from here, attached to an organization, and we will use the DevSecOps organization. Okay, attach. You can see that we have attached it. So this is the server. This is the configuration for it. You can edit it, modify it that by default. This is the default route, which you can see, and we need to start it like this. And you can see that this is the virtual IP address we will get, which is the virtual network. And here, if you need to deattach the organization or attach more organization to this server, okay? So everything is working fine and actually, we got this connection 100%, all right? So far, so good. Now here from the users, you need to, the first thing for this user, you, he need to download the profile or the configuration file. And from here, this is one, you can see. Now let's open it anything. So we, you can see that the DevSecOps, user one DevSecOps server, okay? Which is the one we created. Yeah, I know the name is very long, but this is just arbitrary name. You can name it whatever you want, okay? So you can just double click on it. So now actually you can see that I'm using Mac machine and actually I'm using the tunnel click client. This is used to connect to the VBN. And if I click double click on it, so only me put the password, click on here. You can see that we have it here, which is the DevSecOps user one DevSecOps. So if I click on it and let's wait until it is connected from here. Now you will get this problem. Click OK, it's OK, but you can see that waiting for server response no response at all okay now you may ask me why is that actually well we did we forget to modify and configure the security group right remember that so let's disconnect for now let's hurry up to the instances from here to the security and from here you can choose the security group the vpn security group we created and we need to allow another port and as you can see from here from the server where it is yeah here can see now we are using the UDB on this board. So copy and paste it here, okay? As a custom UDB and allow from anywhere. And let's put this board, okay? Now, as simple as that, now let's save the rule. Now let's start restart the server like this. All right, so far so good, okay? Now let's click again. Now let's connect again and let's see what will happen this time. Yeah, ignore these messages. Actually, this will get again and over and over because, you know, some default with the configuration or whatever. But you can see that now we are connected successfully. As you can see, one user connected and this is the user ID. So if you go to the users, you can see that now user one is online. All right.
Now, actually, everything is working correctly. Okay, now if I go again to this security group, and if I hear from here, actually, for example, I don't need anyone to access the console. Okay, we just need the authorized people. How to do that? Yeah, I know we have a security, which is the user and password, but still we need extra layer of security. Well, actually, we can remove these, the HTTP and HTTPS, and this time, actually, you can see, this time I will not use from my IP or anywhere, this time, because my IP can be changed, right? But this time I will use the security group ID, which is the same VBN security group, as you can see. Now, here's come the powerful of using the security group and the VBN on AWS. So here, allow the HTTP, only the traffic coming from this place. And this place is the VBN security group, which means that anyone connected to the VBN server will be able to connect to this server. Okay, now actually let's test out. But again, don't forget to put for the HTTPS as well. Okay, so for the HTTP and HTTPS, yeah, of course, for the as such, I mean, yeah, like this. So the as such, HTTP or HTTPS, it will be allowed from this security group, which is the VBN security group, which means that it is allowed only to the connected users. Okay, like this. Okay, all right, so far so good. Now you may ask me, but what about the UDB? Now again, remember that the bastion host must be inside a public subnet, which means it need to have a public IP address. And actually it's better to have elastic IP address attached to the server, but we didn't do that. It's okay because not every time we reboot the server or we stopped it and to start it again, we need to modify the IP address. We saw that actually in the settings, remember? Because actually you need to restart it and you need to put it over and over. So instead of that, we can just put elastic IP address. And the better of that actually is by using a domain name. Either it is a private or public. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Actually, don't worry. We will see all of that right away in this course. Okay. So don't worry. Now here we have the custom UDB. And again, we say it needs to be public. Okay. Now let's save the rule. Okay. Now it has been saved. Now, actually, if I go to the dashboard or if I refresh the page, you can see that it is not working. Well, you may ask me, but but we just modified that. Yeah, but now you can see that we are using the public IP address. Now, if you want to anyone to access that, you can use the public IP address. But if you type this one, as you can see, the AT or HTTPS to be from only the VBN, so the VBN, which means the private server, right? Because the VBN is inside our VBC. Yeah, I know it is inside the VBN server. Yeah, forget about these two. So you can see that we have this VBN server. Yeah, and you can see that it is inside. You can see that it is inside the public subnet. But again, it is something within the VBC. So it's not from the public internet, which means that I need to use its private IP address. So if I type my, I, my private IP address this time, while I am connected to the VBN, you can see that it is now working. But again, for this certificate issue, please ignore it. Just type this is an safe. And you can see it is working 100%. So admin, the A is capital, admin 123123. All right. So you can see that even though we are using the private subnet, now we can use it and access to the Brighton L server, the VBN server, while I am connecting to the VBN configuration. As you can see, the VBN key, I'm using it so I can access the VBN server even I'm using the private IP address. And you saw that how this worked actually by modifying the security group and for the security group for the VBN server. I mean, as you can see, the VBN SG. So here, this is the same VBN SG with the same VBN, we put it here, okay? So for, the, for this VBN server, to allow HTTP or HTTPS or SSH access to it, you need to allow from anywhere, right? We saw that, but we don't need anyone access our organization to be working on it or to can access it. So how to do that? By doing instead of 000, so from anywhere, only for the SG, which is the VBN SG, which is the same VBN SG, which means that the ones that have the VBN key that we have created from the users from here. Okay, so add as many users you want and download 
the configuration for them and they can access only these only those people can access the server or access our private subnet okay so far so good now actually now this is something wonderful now in the next lecture we will start installing jenkins and we will start the server inside the private subnet and only the private people can access it only the people with the credentials or the vpn configuration key can access our server all right i will see you there